Certainement. Comment allez-vous aujourd'hui? Tu fais bien? Shall I translate that? Hello everyone and how are you today? So, as you can see, I'm a little bit obsessed with chintz still. If you didn't see the video that I was wearing last time, I made a chintz jumpsuit and I also recapped on the history of chintz. So if you're interested in seeing that, have a look at the link here and you can recap yourself on the fantastical history of chintz and the beautiful style of this fabric. And also, I really enjoyed making that tutorial because um, my mum really liked it too. So, this week we're going to be doing something a little bit more challenging. As I said, I've gone down the rabbit hole of chintz. I'm obsessed. I want everything made out of chintz. Now, that being said, I thought, why don't we pay homage to where the chintz fabric originated from, which is India. And then I thought to myself, oh, I know the perfect thing to make. I absolutely adore an Indian quilted jacket. It is the perfect summer outfit. You just lightly drape it over you. It comes in multiple colors, multiple styles, and it's perfect. I have one, which I actually do have several, I won't lie, because they're fantastic for summer and it's just great. And then you've got a nice little evening look going. Yes. Now, quilted jackets themselves have dated back centuries from the medieval period when they would be used as padding for chainmail and then to quilted undergarments that would keep you warm. Um, I especially like to make quilted petticoats for my period costumes. I have a few. Then I also loved the quilted jacket that Claire Fraser wears in Outlander. It's just so lush. Also from the 18th century, they had these beautiful caracus that were sometimes quilted as well. Quilted dressing gowns called banyas that were used for gentlemen for lounging around the house. They were also made of chintz. Up until nowadays, we can see a lot of quilted jackets used for outdoor wear and those hiking across the country or being super English in the countryside. Actually, in my research, I saw a lot of amazing jackets. So stay tuned as I try to endeavor to do an A to Z of jackets and give up all storage in my wardrobe. It's gonna happen. I need a bigger house. I should also mention, if you're new to the word quilted, what does it mean? You often see the word quilted used for duvets or dunas. Now the technique for quilting is getting two pieces of fabric and smashing a piece of wadding together, which can either be made by using a poly or a nylon wadding or a bamboo, which is my personal favorite because they keep you so warm and they're thin, so they're fantastic for costuming. When you want to combine these two pieces of fabric, they make a new fabric, you use stitches. You can do hand sewing, decorative stitches, or in this case for this project, we'll be doing machine straight stitching just to make it super easy for us. I personally don't have any bamboo. So as I was saying before the camera, rudely interrupted by cutting out, I don't have any bamboo wadding in my house. I'm going to be using the poly wadding that I have and then I will be slicing it in half to make it thin like the bamboo and that's just quite easy. You just rip it open, but you'll see that later on. I had a lot of fabric made left over from making this jumpsuit. I thought, yes, that's brilliant. What else can I do? Okay. Oh, so I'll make this jacket. Right. Okay, cool. So what else? Oh, let's make it reversible. So let's get a fabric in a different color, but the same print. Yes, this is going to be incredible. Yeah. Um, stay tuned to what happens next. <laughs> but I thought, what a fantastic idea to make a reversible jacket. You have two really beautiful colors on either side and you can wear them for any occasion, which I thought was fantastic. So what was really exciting for me to be able to make a new piece using chins and also making it reversible is that I get to use more chins. I get to research quilting techniques as I haven't quilted for a long time. It'll be really nice to delve into that again. I also will have a multi-use jacket for summer when we can leave the house, of course. And then also, I wouldn't feel so jealous of my colleague's beautiful quilted jacket. <laughs> that all being said, let's dive back into the world of chintz and create a reversible quilted jacket. And also, I'm very sorry, I know it's gonna be a really, really long video today, especially starting with the intro, but I wanna get as much tutorial information in there as possible. This ended up being quite a long project to do. There was lots of fiddly parts, so I just want to make sure it's all clear and you see every bit of the detail and how it worked. 
So I already have a jacket in the style that I want to use. I think it's a really nice simple cut. So what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be taking that pattern and recreating it on a piece of calico so I have the pattern pieces. You can also do this on like a baggy t-shirt and then just like alter pieces to fit in the style that you want. Or if you want, I can like maybe try and make a pattern piece for you. I hope you enjoy the multiple montages and all the techniques you're about to learn. What we need is a ruler, a pencil, a pen, and some pins, as well as some calico, and the pattern piece of your choice. What we're gonna do is fold the jacket in half so we can mark where all the pattern pieces are gonna go. I personally like to put the sleeve inside of the other sleeve that makes it one piece and easier to maneuver when making the pattern. Now laying down the jacket on the calico, we're gonna mark around. Sometimes it's easier for me to pin the pattern that I'm copying onto the fabric but make sure you get all the seams. So you need your shoulder, your collar, your armhole. Okay, make sure you put all your notches on it so you know where your center back is, how many pieces you wanna cut. And then by using a ruler, you can go through and neaten up the edges so you have more of a crisp edge of what the pattern piece is gonna look like. I love this ruler because it's from one, it's in centimetres. I always like to work with a 1 or a 1.3 centimetre seam allowance and then this has all the markings on it. It's, so it's really good for me. This way I can have all the seam allowances included. I know that I'm not having to add anything onto the fabric itself when I cut it out. And then, you know, it looks cool. <laughs> so once we've done this, we're going to start on the front. Now this jacket in particular has two pieces. It has a collar and a front panel. So make sure you in all those pieces because you want to replicate that on the front. Now when you're doing this make sure you do again the side seams, the bottom edge, the armhole, the shoulder but you also want to make sure that you have the straight line at the front because you don't want to include the collar because the collar is going to be a separate piece. As you can see this collar goes from the neck all the way down to the front. Oh now the pocket. What I'm using now is a piece of calico on top of the fabric and then I'm just feeling where the pocket is and I'm going to trace it around. Once I've done that I can set it aside, fold it in half and just make sure it looks nice and crisp. Okay, again we need to make sure we put all our notches so where the centre front's going to be, where the slit is going to be if you want to slit in the side and all of the seam allowances. Now with the hem, I've done a bit more just because, you know, I want it to be a little bit longer just in case. With the sleeve, I made the arm a little bit longer because I do live in the UK now where it's a little bit cooler in the evenings and it's not like an asteroid. Okay, so here I've only marked half of the sleeve because what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it over and then create exactly the same shape on the other side because in the long run that's going to be easier for you because you'll be able to get exactly the same shape on either side without it going a little bit off. Now when doing this you've got to make sure you get all of those weird angles that will really help you in the long run and also if you're worried maybe measure your armhole so you can make sure that it's exactly the same on the jacket that you put on the pattern. So don't forget to also make the collar piece. I found it easier for me to measure the distance from the front to the front all the way along it and then measure the distance. So I was just able to make a straight pattern and then say cut on fold. Make sure you cut out all the pattern pieces so we can start to work on it. Well, I'm exhausted. Thank goodness I was able to have a nap to rest. But I have all my pattern pieces all cut out. I will lay them out and show you what they will look like. But I need to get to the most important part, which is ironing all the fabric after it has been washed. I always, always, always wash fabric. It gets rid of all the unnecessary fibers or dirt and it also shrinks the fabric if there is any shrinkage in the fabric. So then you're working with a piece of fabric that is true to its form so it won't shrink in the wash. So thank God I learned that technique. I'm so thankful. Anyway, Let's get this um, filming montage sorted. Now that I'm more skilled at working with chins, 
doesn't really matter where you place the pattern because each way it's going to look fantastic. So you have the liberty of where you want to place your patterns on the fabric. For me, I will be working with the fabric facing up because then I can get a clear understanding where the pattern pieces will be falling. So you have your pocket piece here. Ta -da! And what you want to do is, I find the easiest way to do it, is that you already have the pattern piece on here. You go here to the pattern that you've made. And what I'm going to do for this exercise is I'm just going to pin a pin there and a pin there so I know where the seam, the corners are going to be. So I've matched up with the corners here and here. Now I'm going to bring that down and then look for the base of that in the center and put a pin here. So this pins we're able to translate to the top fabric and to the back of the fabric. Now that we've found where our pattern's going to be, we want to get some spare fabric and cut out so we match the fabric. So looking at all of this, I don't actually, I did a boo-boo, let's be honest. Well, it's not really a boo-boo, it's more of an artistic license. There is not going to be a pattern piece that matches up because this beautiful flower I can't find a piece to match up but that's kind of okay because then I won't be searching for the pocket because it's gonna look so beautifully um, inside the fabric but I'm okay I can like choose to like really powerfully represent one flower on each pocket brutally honest with you I started this project because I'm like I've got so much of the cream fabric left let's do what I can um, what an idiot <laughs> so I think I'll be turning that into a beautiful corset an 18th century corset which would be really lush um, I will film that because that'd be very interesting so what I'm gonna do instead is that I do have enough of the corset and all that stuff but what happens if I got the red because that'd be really cool and then I could do some really nice like white stitches and I've got some really nice white thread that I can use to um, quilt it because why not so I've just been shopping on eBay love eBay and I've come across this chintz and I think that's the way to go now what I found really interesting about buying chintz online it's mostly for quilters apparently because they're selling it in um, quarters. So what I'm going to do, to get two meters, you've got to buy half a meter, and then I'm going to get four. Yeah, and I'll wait for those to come, and we shall continue this when the fabric arrives and it's washed. <laughs> After many, many days, we finally got the red fabric. So I'm going to cut out all the pieces that I already cut out in the blue fabric Right, so here what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be kind of getting a test of how I feel about the fabric. So here is its full width. Okay, so I didn't like the full width if you can't tell. So what I'm doing now is that I'm cutting it in half. So you just kind of like, you kind of sense where the fabric is and you just gently pull it apart. It's quite easy to do that and then it'll be thinner, which is great because you don't want a thick jacket for summer. So. I'm going to work as it's a double fabric, so this is how, why I'm pinning the two pieces together, so I can get my two pieces of wadding for it. So, this is not as easy as I thought it was going to be, because when you think about it, you go, oh, I am quilting a jacket together that's meant to be seamless. So I won't lie to you, I spent about 20 minutes going like this, and thinking really hard last night about the best way to do it because you know you want it to be seamless you want it to be perfect and like I've actually been researching and you can't really find much information about the best way to do this if it's quilted so because everything's lined and I don't want it to be lined I want it to be quilted on both sides so it's absolutely seamless and you can't tell where the seam joints so 
My solution I think I'm going to try is that I'm going to quilt the pieces but I'm going to make sure I mark with chalk on the outside where the seam allowance is so I don't sew into that so I, that is my um, starting point. What I think we're going to do with the whole project is that once it's quilted, shoulder seams, side seams. So I think with the sleeves what we're going to do is we're going to sew it up one, the sleeve on one piece of fabric then sew the same colour into the matching colour of the sleeve pocket. I saw some pictures where they folded over the fabric and you could maybe stitch in the ditch of there and maybe there so maybe we'll give that a go see how the progress goes because this is the first time doing this it's all about progress and learning with this which is very exciting because I've really got to work the noggin on this job so as you saw previously I've already backed the wadding onto it it's ready to go I'll get the matching fabric we'll mark where the seam allowance is and we'll start doing stitching. Uh, originally I was going to hand stitch this but I think not to do that with this because I kind of feel like it needs to be machine stitched and I think I might use a cream or a white thread. I'm not entirely sure. I'll let you know when I get there. I think with the quilting stitch I think it's going to be a centimeter, one and a half, but again I will let you know. Yes, so that's my food for thought for beginning the project. All right, let's get started. This step you want to make sure that it all matches seamlessly and perfectly. I have done this by laying one fabric on top, putting the wadding there in, and then making the blue the top fabric that I'll be stitching from. So that was where it really needed to be pinned perfectly. Here I'm just doing my seam allowance that I had done before which is about a centimetre. And then continue this throughout all the steps. What's good about starting with the collar piece is that you can understand how the fabric's going to move. I discovered really quickly that minimal pinning was not going to help me. So I decided to pull out my quilting pins, which are longer pins, and pin all the way down. So I knew the fabric would not move when I was stitching it down. It gives it the security it needs for the stitch that you want. It is now time to quilt the fabric together. So you're going to start off by doing one centimetre away from the top fabric and stitching all the way along. You're going to make the stitching channels 1.5. I did do some that was one centimetre but it was just too close together. 1.5 is a bit more of a leeway and it doesn't make the fabric so tight together. It looks much much more crisper and nice and more of the quilted fabric that you want to see. With the back seam, because I had the fold still there from when I had ironed it, I used it as my centre point guideline. So I started pinning down there and then I moved my way across on either side to make sure the fabrics had flushed with each other as well as with the wadding. As you can see as well, I used a lot of pins because that's what was needed in the end to make sure the fabric didn't move around. So again using that fold we have in the centre back, sew down all the way so you have a nice crisp straight stitch. And then you'll be able to start stitching your quilting stitches on either side. I went one way and then I went the other way. And then you continue painstakingly stitching all of this until the whole piece is covered in quilting. A wee side note to note is make sure you do check both sides of the fabric because I found that the red moved a little bit. So if you want, maybe you could even um, tack and stitch this down if you're really worried about it moving. But it didn't move a lot, it just moved a little bit. As you can see here, it's starting to look absolutely lush on both sides of the fabric. I think choosing white was the best idea possible for my stitching. A technique that I was using was to roll up the fabric as I had stitched it and then just pin it down. That means I didn't have fabric flapping all over the place and I was able to control my stitches a bit more with this rolled up technique. With the sleeve, I just used a ruler to measure down the center so we could work from there again and have an equal amount of distance with our stitching. And then continue with a very, very good TV show that you're watching, I hope, stitching all the way down. Okay, let's go back to this. So I've done this as my first step so I could just get an understanding of what was going on. So I wanted to do it so all the fabric was encased and I didn't have to do any bias binding and it looks really, really crisp. We're going to take the edging for the facing. 
We're going to do a very small stitch along the edge, which will be an edge stitch, and then from this stitch line we're going to go forward until we reach one centimetre mark here. I'm very lucky with this foot because as you can tell it has different guides. So I'm going to be using this, but maybe half of that. And then again, guess what we're going to do? We're going to quilt even more. And an artistic shot. So as my journey has progressed into quilting this, I will give one tip. Maybe you should cut the sizes a little bit bigger because I have noticed even though I pin it, I could even tack it. I've done all this stuff, but it is slipping and I think the size will stretch. I just got some cake and I will be eating it. So sticking with our 18th century vibe. Mm -mm. Oh, that is very nice. Mm -mm. As I got through it from further and further, I realized that what I wanted to actually do is not going to work the way I wanted to. But in my research, I've seen some of the jackets that have like a bias binding on it. So I think I will do that. I am still debating if I do it, the blue sides together as a top layer and then bias bind the red. I do have some red bias binding and I think I have enough because I was going to edge the bottom and the cuffs with some red bias binding or I could use some leftover scraps and make some bias binding of the red and I think it'd be really nice I think the blue should stay really muted and I think the red when you turn around goes what bam so <laughs> I think that's the best way to do it once we've sewn all the pieces together you have to cut away all the wadding so it's thinner on the seams so I think as much as I wanted to do it in a fantastic way and have no seams, it's okay. You'll learn if anyone actually knows the correct way to quilt it and then have no seams when it's sewn together, please let me know because I would love to know that because the plan was to never make this as a normal jacket. I wanted it to be seamless and... I have so we're going to get all of our pieces together. So I've got the back piece here. We've got the two front pieces here and we've got the sleeves here so what we're going to do first is we're going to work on attaching the back to the front so I don't know if you guys have much of experience with making a jacket so it's going to be very simple we're going to use the blue as the top the end of that was the blue as the top fabric I decided to stop filming because I was embarrassed I knew the episode of Midsummer Murders from the music so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to trim down all the wadding on the seam allowance so we do not have that bulk when we stitch the fabric together. Let's open her up. She looks fabulous, don't you think? Right. So we're going to have the fabric matching each other. So the red will be on the outside. Okay, I find it's easy for me personally to work from the top so because we want to keep the armhole shape and then we can always trim this down here if it's a bit odd and then we can create maybe like a curve or like a different straight line so it's the best way to do it. Just before I start, I want to show you this. Well done, Polly. So what we want to do is because the fabric's moved, even though it's like been held together as I said before I do think this needs to be cut a little bit bigger next time so let's trim down the excess blue it's now time to start pinning together so we're going to pin down the shoulder seam and the side seams so again work from the armhole because let's keep that because that's going to fit beautifully inside. No! It ran out of bobbin. No, don't you hate it when that happens? <laughs> So the next stage we want to do is we want to bias bind the seams because I'm suggesting that now when the seams are smaller, instead of when you've got the whole jacket, you're like, oh, 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 you're fighting with the jacket and you just cannot be bothered doing that on a Saturday night. Also, you want to do this because we're going to add the front panel here as well. 
and then we can't really add it when you've got this floating around. So it's best to do it now. Also, by doing this pinning beforehand, because you know how I said, I don't know if I want to use that fabric or that fabric. So let's have a look what that looks like. So we pinned it down. Now, when we go to it, I want to sew along the stitch line here, but then I'm going to press it and then the fabric will go on the back. So once we sew it, let's just to get an idea of how it's going to look. So once we sew it, it should look like that. But what do you guys think? I think it looks quite nice. But let's get some of this scrap fabric. Make a little pretend seam. Have a look. Okay, so we got that. But what happens if it looked better with that look better? It could. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know now because they both look quite interesting. I think I'm going to make this a focus point for the cuffs and the hem. I'm going to see with my fabric if I can get some strips on the bias because you don't want to do bias binding on the straight because there is no give. Let's make the bias about five centimeters because then what you can do, I, I will show you this but this is my idea, we sew it onto one side and then whoop, whoop, fold it down and there's only one stitch line there. But we'll probably hand sew that because I don't want the fabric to go through here. Okay. Let's make some bias binding. We've got our scrap bit of fabric. Okay, this is a nice biggish part. So we can see here is the selvage. So using the beautiful pattern master, but we're going to match that 45 degree angle up to the selvage. But look, there's some space here. So what we want to do, we want to put the ruler right on that corner there because we can still use that. And that'll give us a nice big strip. Okay, so using a chalk pen or whatever medium you like to use, do a line across, great. And then here you're going to get four centimeters. I'm going to line up that four centimeter line with your chalk line and cross it across. One, two, three, four, monsters banging on the door. Let's start with this. So you want to get these sides of here getting it edge to edge so we're going to do the stitch line that way so for me because I need to remember I always pin the direction when I'm doing things like this the direction I want to go so it'll look a little bit like this and look at that stretch wow let's continue doing this to all the pieces I hope that makes sense because you want to create a triangle so it will be smooth and become one line. So we're going to sew down this line so then it will be on the angle. I want to cut off all this excess so I like to leave about 2 mil. Voila. So when you go like that it's going to look very very smooth. Okay, so now that we've got our bias binding and what we're going to do is attach the bias binding. Now, I like to do my bias binding with my fabric very differently to the way you would do a pre-made binding. I like to fold my binding in half and then pop it on. Now that we've pinned this on, we want to stitch it. So when you stitch this you've got to make sure you stitch on the previous stitch that you already had that seals the seam together because you want to keep it consistent the seam so there's no difference so now that we've sewn these on I'm going to actually trim these down a bit okay now we're going to iron that and once we've ironed it we're going to fold it over pin it down and I think a little um, slip stitching will look nice. You could do that if you want the thick, but I think what I can do is that I can actually roll it underneath the fabric to make it 
thinner. Can you see? That's so much nicer. But I do think stitching it down by hand is going to be the best thing for it. But you know, pins are just the first step. Like I find a lot when I'm actually in the process of hand sewing it, things change a lot. So I can like manipulate as I hand sew it. So I just use this as a guideline for me. Then repeat the process on all sides of the fabric. I'm going to take this opportunity to stitch down all this bias binding seams while the fabric is still quite small. Once we have stitched it down, it's now to repeat the same process on the collar. Now it's time to work on the pocket. So we're gonna stitch down all the seams except for the top edge. Then we'll trim the excess fabric around leaving a two mil seam allowance and then we'll bag it up via the top. Then we will tuck in the top fabric and then we will create the beautiful edging that we want for our pocket by top stitching the top layer and then two centimeters down. Once we've made up all our pockets, we need to place them on the jacket. By using the pattern, I'm using pins to mark where the important points are. So the corners, the top and the bottom. Then I'll just pin it gently down and then I'll repl replicate the same technique on the other side so that the pockets look seamless and you can stitch them all as one piece. As I said, I will be using this red bias binding because I think it'll give it a little pop that it needs. So for this, I'm going to sew it on folded and then I'll be only stitching it once. The idea is just to stitch along this edge so it'll be all sealed. A trick I like to use because of the nature of this fabric is that it's really easy to fold it. So I'm just gonna fold the bias binding in half, get a nail and use that to create a sharper line. So I have pinned all this down. It looks really lush actually. And now while we've got the motion going of doing all the bias binding and then I'll also have the red thread on the machine, I'm also gonna do the sleeves. So we just wanna be able to bias bind the hems of the sleeve, so just the edge here. So it's universal, it looks exactly the same. And then you could also like have it tucked up either way. I thought I also would point out with this, you don't need to edge off the, um, the seam because we're still yet to sew the sleeve together. And that will be all piped when we use the red fabric underneath. So it's just a nice simple thing. But if you don't know how to edge it, normally speaking with this, I like to just fold it over and tuck it all under so then it's nice and crisp. With this, you've got to make sure that the hem lines up here as well as the armpit. So this is really important. So you do have to manipulate to make it fit perfectly if it doesn't fit perfectly. Then let's repeat the process yet again. We're going to pin the sleeve to the tunic piece of the jacket. Now you do that by turning the sleeve inside out or the jacket inside out and then pinning it down so the fabrics are matching. And then once you've done that, you stitch it all yet again. Gotta keep doing the same process. <laughs> day and it's only 8 a.m. and it's scorching already so it's gonna be very very hot but lush and sweating in my flat so we'll see how that goes today but I just wanted to check in and see how you found this because I'm quite pleased with this this looks so beautiful it looks even more beautiful in the days as I have to say because it's bring up all the beautiful white colors and ah oh, it's just so cute sorry it's just it's right there <laughs> So I'll just put on my shades and act cool, get my summer vibes going, way. 
So I really hope this tutorial was informative. It gave you the information you needed to be able to create this. I know it was a long tutorial. I'm very thankful that you watched the whole thing, but I hope you come away with knowing how to create this really, really beautiful summer look because I've been using this. I've used it to go down to the post office when it's a little bit cold. I've been wearing this in the evenings in the house because we can't physically leave the house yet. So make sure you follow my Instagram so you can see it when I wear it to the pub for the first time. That would be crazy. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed going to the world of chintz. I've got one more video left for you guys with chintz because I did have enough fabric with the white chintz for this project. We're going to be looking into the history of stays and also recreating a stay. If you liked this and if you want to have a go making this, make sure you like this video because it really helps my channel and also subscribe for more videos coming out like this. I'm really enthused to be able to time travel so we can look into the history of fashion and fabrics and then also we get to travel when we're allowed to travel. So from this beautiful glorious morning in sunny London, sunny question mark, for how long? That's the question. Oh the drama. But on that note i really hope you have a beautiful day i really hope you have a fantastic week and i will see you on the next one bye